You won't believe this news, we got the names of candidates who could replace Gary Gensler as SEC chair if Donald Trump was to win again, I'll give you all the names. And Hong Kong is about to approve a bunch of licenses for different crypto exchanges very soon. And another bank is launching a Bitcoin investment product. We are seeing massive capitulation all over the world. Guys, let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Folks, the big news of the day, and that is Politico's reporting that Robin Hood Chief Legal Officer Dan Gallagher is favored to replace Gary Genser as the SEC chair if Trump was elected president again. Guys, this is a very big narrative that's being put out here, and it shows what a political liability Gary Gensler is, that you have a presidential candidate, Donald Trump, calling for his firing, saying he would fire him on day one. Now these reports are coming out. This is most likely from the Trump camp saying, here's who we would make the SEC chair. (laughs) And we see a lot of Democrats are turning on Gensler and Elizabeth Warren and all their anti-crypto nonsense. So, Gallagher is not the only person that was named, but let me give you all the details here. Uh, Dan Gallagher actually testified before Congress just a couple weeks ago talking about all the problems Robin Hood has encountered with the SEC, trying to work with the SEC, trying to get ca- a clarity. And Gallagher is a former SEC commissioner, so he knows what's going on, guys. It's someone who has been on the inside, and he's uh, out here calling out Gary Gensler and the SEC for their failed approach to crypto. So once again, uh, he is Robin Hood's chief legal officer. So Gallagher has become a top contender for that spot Politico reported on Monday. That would be an interesting move given that the SEC SEC's signal charges would be incoming. Robinhood's crypto unit, Robinhood Crypto, received a Wells notice from the SEC in May. Here's what Gallagher had to say. It is an honor to have my name included in any discussion of who may be the next SEC chairman, Gallagher said in an email statement to the block. I've had the privilege to serve in various roles at the SEC, including as commissioner. I care deeply about the agency and my hope for any new SEC chairman would be that they foster access to the markets and ensure the U.S. remains at the forefront of financial innovation. So we need someone like this who's pro-innovation, gets it. We need to work with this industry and figure out the rules, not attack it and and break the law and lie and do all kinds of nonsense. But once again, as we've talked about ad nauseum, the orders were called in, right? Genser and Warren, hey, kill these crypto startups, put up roadblocks so that the TradFi incumbents can catch up. Sir Gallagher was previously a Republican SEC commissioner from 2011 to 2015. Before that, he was counsel to the SEC commissioner, Paul Atkins, and also worked on issues involving the SEC's enforcement division and trading division. More recently, Gallagher has criticized the agency's approach for regulating digital assets. So as mentioned, he testified before Congress about this just a couple of weeks ago. Now, some of the other names that were mentioned, folks, uh, is very interesting. This includes former CFTC chairman Chris Giancarlo. Many of you know him. He has been on my podcast many times. And also former SEC general counsel Robert Stebbins and current Republican SEC commissioner Hester Peirce. Now, I would love Hester Peirce to get that job as well. She absolutely gets it. But uh, they noted here, and she actually told me this um, earlier this year, she plans to leave the agency after her term in 2025 or after her term ends in 2025. But you never know. She could change her mind. But uh, it doesn't seem like she's a leading candidate. It seems like Dan Gallagher is. So uh, very interesting, guys. The narrative that's being put out here shows how much of a political liability Gary Gensler is. And that's why many Democrats are turning on him and Elizabeth Warren, and he's getting grilled at these hearings. Now, of course, we know he doesn't care. He's rich. He, there's no accountability. No, no one's going to do anything to him there. He's being protected by Elizabeth Warren. But uh, John Deaton is trying to unseat Elizabeth Warren, and I believe he can do it if you guys donate and uh, if you're in the state of Massachusetts, vote. And uh, we'll see what happens with the election. We know that if Trump wins, Genser is gone for sure. Now, if Kamala Harris wins, there are talks, that, and I think Mark Cuban verified this, that they don't like Genser, the, the Harris camp and, and Kamala Harris, but they haven't come out and say it directly. You, you know, they're using these third-party people like Mark Cuban, which, once again, nothing against Mark Cuban, but 
I need to hear it from you, Kamala Harris. Like, what are you doing? Um, and once again, I, I want to make crypto a non-political, non-election issue. It shouldn't be. But unfortunately, Elizabeth Warren did that. But uh, it really shouldn't be. But look, I can't give Kamala Harris the benefit of the doubt. And I don't know if she would fire against her. The, look, look, Mark Cuban said she would. But until I hear something, until I see full crypto policy from the Harris camp, I can't believe anything from a third party. You know, at least with Trump, you hear it directly from the horse's mouth. There is no ambiguity. The man put out different crypto policies and he said he would fire Gary Gensis. So what more do you want from him? It just we need to hear from Harris. But uh, this is very interesting and it would be great to have a pro-innovation uh, SEC chairman in office and get this thing going. And maybe this change would be one of the catalysts that really gets the crypto market going. Now, let's move ahead. Hong Kong regulator intends to approve more crypto exchange licenses in batches by the end of the year. <laughs> Guys, globally, we are seeing the embrace of crypto. We're seeing licenses getting approved. We're seeing legislation go through. And Hong Kong is a big financial market. We know they have Bitcoin and Ether ETFs. They opened up crypto trading to retail this year. And they did approve licenses for some crypto exchanges. Now they're going to do a whole batch. That is a beautiful thing, folks. So Julia Leong, chief executive of the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commissions, told the HK01 that the regulator aims to see progress by the end of the year, including issuing licenses and batches. Last week, the SFC issued its third license under the new crypto trading regime to HKVAX, HKVAX, if that's what you call it. So this makes me very bullish, guys. We are seeing, once again, the global movement toward adopting this technology. And of course, they have to. This technology is here to stay. It's the next layer on top of the internet. And as I've been telling you for years, we're headed to the token economy. Everything on the blockchain, 24-7 trading, no more opening and closing bell, no more holidays and weekends. These markets will be fully liquid, and it's going to be a truly global market, guys. So incredible stuff. Now, here's some more bullish news. National Bank of Bahrain rolls out its first Bitcoin investment fund. Guys, when I was telling you back in 2018, 2019, that banks, stock exchanges, and all the biggest financial institutions would offer crypto, I wasn't lying because the writing was on the wall and they're all here. So the Bitcoin investment fund is designed for institutional investors and will offer exposure to Bitcoin gains capped at a predefined threshold with 100% loss protection on the downside. So we're seeing the on and off ramps being built for both institutional and retail investors. Of course, I'm more interested in institutional investors because they have more capital. And we know many of these investors are looking to get as much of a return on their money as they are all facing uh, the debasement of fiat currency globally, right? And the money printing is starting again. Rate cuts are happening. So they have to service the debt. Rate cuts are happening in the EU, in the US and so forth. And as I've been telling you guys, we're entering into the next easy money cycle. So you're going to see a lot of move of capital into risk assets like crypto. Now, speaking of Bitcoin, Japan's Meta Planet buys an additional $6.7 million in Bitcoin, raises total holdings to over $40 million. Meta Planet is the micro strategy of Japan. <laughs> they continue to even raise uh, debt and to buy Bitcoin. It's incredible. But look, it's a smart move. And if they do it right, they, you know, they can benefit just like micro strategy did. And I think this is a trend that's going to continue to grow. Uh, Bitcoin will get adoption uh, from companies, from central banks and governments. It's incredible what's happening. Now, a great place where you can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins is on Gemini, which is a crypto platform I've been using for years. They have some amazing products. They have a fully functional exchange where you can buy, sell, store Bitcoin and up to 70 plus altcoins. Uh, they have staking. They have a credit card. They have a USD backed stablecoin called Gemini Dollar. They have a Web3 Creative Studio called Nifty Gateway. And they have a lot of features, guys. Uh, they have a perpetual markets uh, trading option so you can do crypto derivatives. And if you sign up with my link, which will be in the description, you can get $15 free in Bitcoin when you trade your first $100 of Bitcoin. So be sure to check out Gemini. Visit the link in the description. Now, we got news here that crypto disclosure firm Blueprint releases standards to help token issuers comply with EU rules. Now, I'll be interviewing the founder of this company, which is Dr. Christopher Brummer. Many of you may have seen him interview different folks in the crypto industry. He's been doing a lot 
to help uh, get clear legislation, get, get the voice of the industry out there. He said, part of the inspiration for starting Blueprint was to make it easier to comply with new rules, such as the EU's markets in crypto assets regulation. Under MICA, token issuers must make certain disclosures through white papers that must be machine readable. So guys, this is all the setting up of the guardrails to protect investors and to make it clear for entrepreneurs and innovators we need the united states to do the same here now obviously the devil is always in the details so we want to make sure that they do put out uh balanced regulations that they don't stifle innovation while trying to protect investors right just like the united states got it right with the internet and that uh did well for our economy and wealth creation and, and and just amazing companies that were nurtured and fostered in a clear environment like google and ebay and amazon and so forth you guys know the, the whole tech boom there um that could happen here in the United States once again, but the United States is moving very slow and many other countries around the world are embracing this technology. And there's a different dynamic now where the internet makes it easy for people to work from anywhere. So it's easy for these companies to pick up and leave and go to another market, uh, given that crypto is a global asset class. It's not a, just a United States asset class. And uh, you can be anywhere in the world and work on your crypto project, right? So uh, the United States needs to catch up here. Now, U.S. bankruptcy judge approves FTX reorganization plan two years after the exchange's collapse. So looks like uh, the creditors are about to get some of their money back. So about 94% of the creditors in the dot-com customer entitlement claims class who returned their ballots, representing about $6.83 billion in claims by value, voted in favor of the reorganization plan. However, the plan garnered criticism from Sunil Kavuri, a representative of the largest FTX creditor group. Kavuri said the estate should pay out crypto in kind rather than the dollar value. Now, in fact, you know, they're going to pay out the dollar value or the cash with interest. So that's interesting. Uh, James Safer, ETF expert at uh, Bloomberg said adding interest on cash is great, but it's a rounding error compared to what the customer balances would actually be worth if they were paid out in kind. Now, he did add a note here saying, I know this is impossible because FTX didn't actually have the assets. So Sam Bankman Freed was stealing the funds and then trade and then his clown girlfriend, Caroline Ellison and those on the other clowns were trading the funds and losing it. So it's not like the funds were locked up in a hardware wallet. You could just, OK, give the people back. Here's your Bitcoin. Here's your Ethereum. It's all gone. Uh, so it's a mess. But at least, you know, some of these folks will get some of their funds back. Um, and we'll see. And there's been talks about, you know, could these creditors and these folks put the money back into the crypto market? That's TBD. I, I I think that's just a narrative. I don't think uh, these folks are necessarily going to do that. Many of them may be burned by this situation. They're like, I don't want to get involved in crypto again. I just want my money and I want to be gone. Right. Uh, I think that, that could definitely be more than 50 percent of the people. But we'll see. Now, speaking of scams, over five million dollars in crypto stolen from Coinbase users in alleged recent social engineering scheme. Uh, this is for Zach XBT. Uh, he is a great sleuth who's been uh, who does a lot of on chain an analysis and tracks when uh, people get hacked and the movement of funds and so forth. So, big shout out to him. He does some great work. So. Blockchain sleuth Zach XBT said he has helped recover about $275,000 worth of cryptocurrencies for a victim of a social engineering scheme that is growing in popularity. Approximately $5 million in stolen assets can be traced to this unnamed scamming group. So folks, social engineering is one of the big ways uh, these hackers and scammers try to steal your funds. So watch out for which emails you open Watch out for which emails you, you're you clicking links in uh, and, and text messages and phone calls and so forth. Be careful. Uh, you may want to get a secondary phone. That's what I have. You may want to get a secondary computer. That's what I have where I access certain things, uh, you know, with my ledger and so forth. So it's not on the laptop or computer that I use for my podcast and so forth or daily use. So when you have hundreds of thousands and possibly millions um, in funds, you, it's worth you getting putting these extra layers in, you know, maybe buying another laptop and another phone and so forth to make sure you have these extra security layers. So be careful, uh, guys, and, and inform your family as well. Um, 
who may you like you you know someone very close to you who may live in your household because the social engineering scheme uh they may try to go through that loop right your wife your sister whatever whatever your kids uh so just be careful folks it's pretty crazy out there and as the bull market continues and the valuations go up these hackers you know they're going to increase their activities now uh solana dominates token launches accounting for over 87 percent of new tokens in 2024 and this should come as no surprise there's been a ton of meme coins being launched on solana it's, it's been seeing a lot of activity and then there's other things that are uh being built on it aside from meme coins so i've seen the guys at solana build, build some things like blinks and and some other cool projects so it's getting a lot of adoption so very very interesting and this is one of the factors that can contribute to solana continuing to perform well from a price standpoint but we'll see um so as of september 30th solana accounted for over 96,000 new tokens out of a total of 110,180 launch across all tracked chains this represents over 87 percent of all new tokens appearing on dexes a testament to solana's growing dominance in the space so uh this is in comparison with base ethereum bnb chain polygon and 15 other chains so base is the closest competitor base has been getting a lot of adoption that's coinbase's layer two for ethereum but it doesn't have a token uh, but solana continues to perform well however i've been seeing some stats and it was actually published today that the sui network surpassed solana in the number of transactions now i'll be interviewing the co-founder and ceo of Mistin Labs, which is the creator of uh, the SWE network uh, tomorrow, Evan Cheng. So I'm going to learn about what, you know, SWE is up to, what they're trying to uh, do here and, and the performance they've been seeing. So stay tuned for that interview, folks. Uh, so folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to sign up for my free email newsletter. It's 100% free and uh, it covers crypto news. It has insights, knowledge, and much more. Don't forget to grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto. It's a great way to support the podcast. Buy a few copies for your, your family and friends who want to learn about crypto. And if you bought a copy already, please leave a rating and review. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all and I'll talk to you all later.